On behalf of the General Assembly, I have the honor to wel welcome to the United Nations His Excellency Mr. Hakainda Hichilema, President of the Republic of Zambia, and to invite him to address the Assembly. Your Excellency, Mr. Abdullah Shahid, President of the 76th Session of the United Nations General Assembly. Your Excellency, Mr. Antonio Guterres, Secretary General of the United Nations. Your Excellencies, Head of State and Government, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. I wish to begin by congratulating Your Excellency, Mr. Abdullah Shahid, on your election as President of the 76th Session of the United Nations General Assembly. I am confident that your wealth of knowledge and vast experience in multilateral issues will lead to a successful discharge of the important responsibilities of the Assembly throughout this session. Zambia stands to work with you as you execute your mandate in presiding over the matters of this, this session. To the outgoing President, His Excellency Mr. Volkan Bosk, I wish to convey Zambia's appreciation for your commendable service to the United Nations family during the 75th session. Mr. President, I have the distinct honor to deliver my maiden speech as the seventh president of the Republic of Zambia following the electoral victory of our United Party for National Development, UPND, in the presidential and general elections that were held on the 12th of August 2021. I am pleased to inform this August House that the people of Zambia, the Republic of the People of Zambia, once again rose the occasion to usher in a new government through a peaceful election. This has enabled Zambia to further consolidate our democratic credentials, which serves as an inspiration to the African continent, where the outcome of our election was determined by those who vote and not those who count votes. Very important. We are therefore proud to provide leadership in our country where people aspire for a free and just society and where they aspire for their voices to be heard. Mr. President, we were able to achieve this political transformation even at a time when Zambia was grappling with the COVID-19 pandemic and in the midst of deep sorrow following the passing on of our founding father and first Republican president, Dr. Kenneth David Kaunda. I therefore wish to take this opportunity on behalf of the people of Zambia to pay tribute, to pay tribute to this icon leader who was fondly known in our country and elsewhere as KK. It is without doubt that the last remaining stalwart of liberation struggles has left an indelible mark on humanity. Dr. Kaunda's principles, values, contributions towards the ideals of emancipation and independence did not only spread across the African continent, but across the entire globe. His untold devotion to peace and unity laid the very foundation for Zambia's stature as a beacon of peace, not only in Southern Africa, but the, on the African continent as a whole. The Zambian government will therefore build upon KK's profound legacy to live in peace and harmony with one another. As we work towards this year's theme, let us remember the important lessons that Dr. Kaunda taught us, especially as we work towards revitalizing the UN system. Mr. President, the COVID-19 pandemic has had a far-reaching social economic impact globally, including disturbing trade flows, 
supply chains, and various economic activities on our continent in the world. In addition to loss of lives, the pandemic increased poverty levels through job losses, stressed healthcare systems, and worse still, the delivery of education to learners. Disruption to the education systems, particularly in developing countries, was in part due to inadequate information, communication, and technology, ICT facilities, within our countries. In response to the pandemic, Zambia has developed a national preparedness and response plan for COVID-19, which has been used to guide the implementation of mitigation measures for the pandemic. The vaccine program forms an integral part of the response plan in our country. Despite our placing the vaccine program high on the list of mitigation measures, Zambia has only managed to vaccinate a mere 3% of its population. This is against the country's target of vaccinating 70% of the eligible population by the third quarter 2022. This clearly highlights the inequitable access to vaccines developing countries, especially that more than 2 billion vaccines have been administered worldwide. Mr. President, it is fair to state that Recovery from the pandemic hinges upon mass vaccinations before considering other reforms or facilities that tend to fail when countries lock down their economies. It is therefore gratifying that this session of the General Assembly will consider building on initiatives such as the African Vaccine Acquisition COVID-19 no, Acquisition Trust sorry, for COVID-19 AVAT and COVID-19 Vaccines Global Access, COVAX. The two initiatives have made it possible for low-income countries, such as our own, Zambia, to access life-saving vaccines, which will contribute to building resilience and recovery from the pandemic. I wish, therefore, to express Zambia's appreciation for the support that has been provided thus far through the COVAX and AVAT facilities. The UN system and various stakeholders have benefited from. To further guarantee resilience, we call for the concerted and enhanced global efforts towards promoting investments, particularly in local manufacturing capacity and technology transfer on vaccines, related infrastructure, human capital, as well as research and development, R&D.